team, Homer, is uh, uh, at least when the Cubs, at least when the Cubs went and spent that money, you know, Cubs fell flat on their face. At least when the Yankees spend money, they end up uh, uh, contending for a title. I'll give you that. Yeah, and you got you got to remember too. This is a team that you know has also had a lot of guys not want to play there because the stage is too big, and they still managed to win. Yeah, I can't stand players who the stage is too big. If you're going to get a hundred some million dollars, what difference does it make? You play eighty some of your games there, and then you're gone. I mean, New York. Well, wait a second, though. I, I got to say a name before you continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and by the way, I want people to know I do not like A Rod. Okay, I think that was a terrible signing. Well, the you guys... don't like A Rod? Where do you where, where do you not want the rod? Oh come on, dude, Alex <laughs> Alex Rod <laughs> Alex Rodriguez. Okay. I, I do not like that guy. The Yankees made a bad choice in investing as much as they did in him. He's really been nothing but a letdown except once. So um, just got to get that out the there. Biggest, he's one of the biggest bums ever played in the MLB. He doesn't show up in the big stage. I, 09 did not completely erase it for me because last year he looked at the pitch that ended the Yankees season. The guy, he shows up in contract years, hits 50 home runs. The rest of the years, he gets a pass for hitting like 30 home runs. He's not a Hall of Famer. He's a cheater. I don't buy for one second that he only used steroids from 01 to 03. And then, yeah, you go, he, he, his excuse was, I felt the pressure of a huge contract. So, Oh, wow, well, yeah. This, so do a lot of other guys, yeah. When you get traded in the biggest media market in the world, I guess the pressure mar- the pressure just goes off. And then... Then you hit a career high in home runs. But wait, wait, wait. How how do we know that a lot of these pitchers he were hit he was hitting home runs off of weren't juicing as well? I think less pitchers were doing it. I think I, I don't think there's any proof of that, Tim. No, there, there's. I'm just not, looking at right, it logically. I don't think there's any proof of that. I think and I don't like A-Rod people either. People but hey, it. let's let's be fair. You know, you look at a lot of the. Pitch speeds back then, it was ridiculous. How many guys were throwing in the 90s and upper 90s? Yeah, but that's still in that. That's what you expect in the major leagues. That's, there was a bit of that, but the home run rate at that time, it was just almost boring because you, you could go out there and you'd expect an eight-run game. There was never a pitching game ever, which I like just a mix of it all. I fall somewhere in between liking pitching and hitting. So the way it was in like oh five to oh eight was or oh nine before this pitching dominated came in was right how I was happy with it. Well, you know, there's there's uh, pitchers in the Hall of Fame that threw spitballs too. You know, there's batters in the Hall of Fame who were using cork bats that were never caught, or guys who were, you know, pine tar or whatever the hell else. I don't. I'm one that I fall in a very unpopular category with that. I think Bonds is a Hall of Famer. I think A-Rod's a Hall of Famer. Oh. I'm sorry. McGuire, Hall of Fame. Sosa, Hall of Fame. Because oh. <laughs> unless you are conclusively proving that everyone, you know, how about sandpaper on the hat? You know, the pitchers used to do that, and there's guys like that in the Hall of Fame. And I'm I'm sorry if you that cannot prove. How can you prove conclusively that everyone in the Hall of Fame has never cheated? But those little things happen and now; they happen then. That I don't think that that's as big of a deal as steroids. Steroids, like Sammy Sosa, was a joke with the White Sox. He juiced up. Jose Canseco said that steroids made him. Bond, Bond screw Bond. He was a first whoa, down whoa. Hall of Fame. Jose Canseco, come on, man. We can't listen to what that guy says. Why? He's told us all the truth about who took steroids and who didn't. Uh, how do we know? Everyone how do we know he didn't leave names? I, yeah, but Tim, and love debating this. You're a very, like, very knowledgeable baseball guy, and this is just a good debate, so don't take it personal. But yeah. I'm sorry. Jose Canseco... There, I guarantee you there were names in his head that he left off the list because he was friends with them. 
Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So I, he's, I, I don't think he, he just, he, I don't think he just came out with the notion of, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm coming out to expose everyone who cheated. No, I think he had an axe to grind with some of those guys. I think there was some professional jealousy, and uh, yeah, whatever Jose Canseco says, so what? Uh, there were a lot of guys using rights. Who's to say that they weren't using rights in the '70s and '80s? They were using amphetamines, which I don't even view as cheating, really. Oh, come on, though, Tim. When when you're playing 162 games a year, and we know that they they had amphetamines in the coffee in the dugouts until a few years yeah. ago, and when you're playing 162 games, you use that as an upper. Yeah, but look, correct me if I'm season. wrong. I, do, doesn't amphetamines basically put you at your 100%, like you're 100% healthy and everything? It doesn't put you at. It doesn't make you better, like steroids. It's just steroids like effort work. It's like uh, it's just like taking speed. That's basically what it is. It, it, oh, it's crack. an upper. It's an upper, man. Do you really think that Bo Jackson was clean? How about Albert uh, Bell? Yeah, probably not. I I think Ken Griffey Jr. was clean, one hundred percent. Yeah, Ken, Ken Griffey. Griffey we can speculate his numbers looked a little more realistic than some of these crazy home run numbers we saw. Brady Anderson. You know, I mean, we and saw Brady guys. Anderson. Oh, he was so obvious, dude. Not even funny. Yeah, yeah. But what does it even matter? He had one good year. He's never going to be in the discussion for the Hall of Fame. He had well, I'm just saying, when, when guys like yeah. uh, Gary Matthews Jr., look at Gary Matthews Jr. He got busted for roids in the minor leagues. You ever seen how small and skinny that guy was? You know, yeah. there, there's a lot, and there is a plethora, a, li- a long ass list of minor league baseball players who tested positive for roids who never amounted to anything. So I don't buy the notion that steroids make someone. I mean, it can improve your abilities, there's no doubt about it, but these guys were solid players. Sammy Sosa was a. Uh, good fielder. Uh, he was good on the base pads, and he was a decent contact hitter. Uh, before well, he got Barry, Barry that he was Bonds running was home run ball. Uh, yeah, but how could you hold Barry Bonds out of the Hall of Fame? Because he cheated. The, the guy cheated. He wouldn't have taught, He would have had five hundred, some maybe six hundred home runs without steroids. That's it. He said, I, I, "I hate." Who was the famous make... football pitcher? Was that was that Gaylord Perry? Yeah. And and where is he? And and wasn't he viewed by some as a racist and stuff like that? No, yeah. I, I that to me it's about talent. I think P. Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. I think oh, that uh it, it it should be what well, wait you a minute. in your career as a player. But wait a minute, Pete Rose potentially was throwing games to win money. Not as a player. Well, you know, and then I, I bring the same argument to Barry Bonds that during his prime, because he started juice in what would you say about ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. So what about all the years before that? Yeah, you know, I don't great think he's just a great player. First, first ballot Hall of Famer, but the bottom line is, if you cheat, I don't think you should be in. It's not like college football where oh, you you got a car for your mom, so. We're, we're going to take your Heisman away, which is an absolute joke. But oh, it's I agree. Like, th- this made well, you better. It did. I understand how you have to work about double the, as hard on steroids, but it's still, it makes you better. It's an unfair advantage over the people who didn't use it. And Bond, his prime was on steroids, though. It, maybe not the years he naturally had on his prime, but 73 home runs and like 100-some RBIs, I'm pretty sure. His prime was 98 to 02 or 03. Well, wait a minute, though. Did did baseball have a problem with it when he was – and didn't baseball also have knowledge that that was going on? And the only reason the base- it came out was because of, of congressional intervention. So how can baseball, who overlooked what was going on until their ass was to the fire, how can baseball hold these guys out of the Hall of Fame when baseball was involved in the cover-up. Because 
I don't know. I think it's a separate group of people that would be voting that were, that were covering oh, of the team's accident. And I of think course. that people, obviously, they knew about steroids in like the 90s when I think uh, Bowie, whatever, Kuhn was the commissioner, and they said, look, do you want to put something in? And he just kind of turned a blind eye. Bowie Steeler turns a blind eye that doesn't have, that has about anything that doesn't have to do with Hank Aaron. Is like He's obsessed with Hank Aaron. So, but, but feel like it doesn't surprise me at all. I, I don't know. I mean, these people probably are being pretty hypocritical to hold them out of the Hall of Fame when they were the ones that allowed it to happen. But hopefully there's a new group of guys voting. And from what we've seen, these steroid people have about zero chance. I mean, Mark McGuire, if you take those numbers, like, realistically, he's a for sure first ballot Hall of Famer if he hadn't done steroids or if those numbers had not come off of steroids. He was the well, first when he, was part of the, when he was part of the Bass Brothers in Oakland, they were juicing. Yeah, and, and essentially, I read some of that book that Jose Canseco wrote, and he said his second year, I think, McGuire had 49 in his rookie season. This guy had a lot of talent. I don't know if he would have been a Hall of Famer, but he had a ton of talent prior. But he was so small. It's like Barry Bonds was so small, got huge. And now, if you see him now, he, he's really lost, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he lost 80 or 90 pounds since he's been out of baseball. Well, what about Dave Stewart? How do we know he wasn't juicing on the same team? How do we know a Dennis Eckersley or Randy Johnson? You know, you don't necessarily have to look like Hulk Hogan to be juicing. Yeah, I know. I would like to think that Randy Johnson didn't because well, this is probably, he's probably the greatest pitcher I've ever seen. I mean, Roger Clemens might have been, but he was juicing, so I... I would hope, uh, you, you would think if one of those guys was doing it, it would have come out. Jose Canseco said that one guy in the Hall of Fame. You're breaking up, Tim. <laughs> Names that come up? Ricky Henderson, who did get really big, was really fast. He's the obvious name, I think, to everyone. But Dennis Eckersley could certainly be that. I think he was more with a drinking problem, but... I mean, I guess uh, I guess we'll have to agree to disagree because you know I think you got a bunch of old bitter farts, drunk guys. No, I shouldn't say that. You know, some of these guys in the voting committee. Nah, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I just don't. I, I think that a lot of the guys in the Hall of Fame would have done the same damn thing that Barry Bonds did because they're competitors. And when you get catch wind that your competition is doing something to gain an edge, the first thing you do is you go out and find a way to try to close the gap on the edge they're trying to gain on you. That's the nature of competitive sports. So it's hard for me to believe that. Do you know where I'm going with that, Joseph? Well, yeah, I mean, I personally agree, man, because especially money's involved, especially if you, you know, you think other guys are doing it um, and, you know, they're making more money or you might get traded because, you know, your numbers are down and you can use something to enhance it. I mean, I, I personally think if, you know, that you would have had the same, you know, accessibility to steroids a long time ago as you do now or for the last 20 years. I mean, I, I do believe that you would have seen the same thing, you know. You know, you know a guy, Tim, that I always thought was on him? someone that no one would ever bring up, Ricky Henderson. Is Tim there? Um, he might have cut up. out. Let me go check the switch where yeah, he was cutting in and out. Hey, Tim, can you yeah. hear us? No, he did cut out. Okay. Hopefully he calls back in. He must be in a dead spot. I know he's coming back from the ball game. I always thought Ricky Henderson was on him, Joseph. I mean, look at Carl Lewis and some of these track runners, and then look at the speed that Ricky Henderson had. And I'm not saying he was. I'm just saying I had questions. Well, I could I could see that too, man. And speaking of Ricky Henderson, dude, I mean that guy is classic. I mean, oh, I'm thinking right now about his. Well, yeah, and dude, his of course today ah. And the greatest of all time. 
<laughs> you know that speech he gave? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's one of my all-time favorite sound clips. So, I mean, incredible player. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either, man. It's, it's so Baseball is just a, a tricky sport when you try to get into who was using and who wasn't. It really is. That's why I'm saying there shouldn't be a bias against guys who really, what they did, brought the life back into the sport of baseball, Joseph. Let's be honest. Exactly. Well, like you said, dude, it's not like baseball was, you know, trying to attack it and and stop it while it was happening. No way. Are you kidding, dude? Everyone and their mom was watching it when Mark McGuire broke the record and him and Sammy Sosa, you know, were hugging and kissing. No, I'm kidding, but... I mean, you you remember the whole ceremony. <laughs> Every, everyone yeah. was watching that, bro. Everyone and, you know, Bud, yeah. Bud Selig was so happy. That was like the ultimate Viagra for that old bastard. I mean, <laughs> that, you know, that was just something everyone was watching, and baseball was eating it up. I mean, this was right after the lockout. That saved baseball. Yeah, and I see Tim's back. Uh, you know what, though, J- Joseph, if – okay, if it's if, if sports fans are so fickle to want to keep uh, steroid users out of the Hall of Fame or HGH users, which is actually two different things, people never differentiate the two. But if people want to keep uh, performance enhancement users out of the Hall of Fame, when are we going to start stripping the New England Patriots of championships? for taping practices and stealing plays and game plans. Exactly. Exactly. So if you're going to hold someone to some super high standard, man, you got to keep it the same, but we know they're not going to do that. I mean, no. that, that no. whole spy game thing, it was, it was news. What would you say, Bruce? It was news for about a year during that season, of course. But, I mean, do people talk about it now? Not very no. much, you know? No. No. And who knows how long they were doing it? You know, that's the same. That's the same same argument as the steroid users, man. Who knows how long they were doing it? White Sox are trying to blow this game, idiots. Uh oh, what's the situation? Got a guy in third base. Uh, intentional walk. Ozzy Gann's looking stressed. Looks like he wants to choke someone. He's smiling. <laughs> He's crazy. Well, yeah, bottom of the twelfth. Trying to get out of the inning. Omen's on the mound. All right, Tim, we got you back on, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm back on. I want to get on that Patriots now. I'm sorry. I don't think stealing signs is cheating. No, it's not stealing signs. You're stealing plays and game plans. When you know yeah. exactly where a passing route's going to go, and you're getting interceptions and jumping routes left and right, and you know right where a run play is going to go based on formations. And, you know, because teams switch up their looks and and packages each week for the most part. They've got their basics, uh, their basic standard formations, but there's wrinkles they throw in every week. These offensive coordinators, you know, design game plans for every game and the Patriots are stealing those game plans. To me, that is the ultimate cheating in football. Yeah, I was. Oh, yeah. I thought it was just that they got caught taping signs. Maybe that that maybe they did no, steal the Eagles signs. The Super Bowl. They were recording practices from other teams and stealing game plans. That I mean, you know, if it, if that wasn't a big deal. Then uh, why are so why are teams so secretive of their playbooks and all that stuff? You know why yeah. are players looked at as being traitors if they leave a team and then give the other team their playbook? You know and then offensive coordinators have to rewrite the entire playbook. You know it's uh, I but that especially was a when you have end. systems. I mean, you got, yes. people got to realize you have systems on some teams and they have predetermined plays. I mean, and, and not just for one or two in a row. They might have, you know, double-digit plays that they that they run in a certain pattern. I mean, so 
that for me is, is, is crazy because it's not like you're just looking at it either. They're taping it. They can go back and look at it a hundred times. And, uh, you know, so that that was to, honestly to me that was a bigger deal than it was even made because it's kind of get out you know, of the topic. A, no, oh, if you got something else to add, go ahead, Joseph. No, 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 that, that, that was it. I just think that was that was a big deal, you know, even bigger deal than they made it initially. They had a really nice side view here on the White Sox Rockies game, and it just reminded me how much fun baseball games are to watch in person. Man, I love going to live baseball games. You must have really enjoyed yourself tonight, Tim. Yeah, I mean, I I went to a Mets-Phillies game this year. It was a day game, which I'm not a huge fan of. And the Phillies won 11-0, and I'm kind of like, wow. We drove like two and a half or an hour and a half, and it just wasn't a good game. Tonight, I mean, the atmosphere was incredible. Phillies and Red Sox, the, the fans just, they're so passionate, and they argue with each other. I mean, there was one point at the game where a Red Sox fan, fan asked for two beers for him and his girlfriend, and me and this other guy said, don't give it to him, he's a Boston fan. And the vendor just looks and kind of got a smile and walked away. I mean, it, it's just funny. We're going to the 13th. Wow, what a what a game. Wow. 